Hello and welcome to another episode of The Phone Show and today we're taking an in-depth look at iOS 8. What new features is it bringing to iOS devices and what, if anything, does it tell us about the iPhone 6 and Apple's fabled iWatch? All this and more will be revealed shortly, but first, here's a roundup of the latest headline grabbers in the mobile world. It looks like the eternal wait for the long-rumoured Amazon phone is finally coming to a close. After a lot of buzz on the retail giant's social media pages and a video in which customers are seen gawking at a mystery device, Amazon will be holding a launch event on June 18th where it's expected to reveal a 3D smartphone. Previous rumours have suggested the phone will come with a 4.7-inch display and four front-facing cameras with advanced tracking capabilities. Is this our very first glimpse of the Nexus 6? A promotional post by Android on its official Twitter page shows a mystery device that may or may not be the next Google-branded smartphone. The design is certainly very Nexus-y and the thin bezel suggests this isn't a phone we've seen before, but there is always the chance this is just a generic mock-up. Still, there's no harm in staying hopeful. The Samsung Galaxy F is what is expected to be the previously labelled Samsung Galaxy Prime and the company's main challenger to the iPhone 6. In the latest leaks, we see the supposed handset flaunting a metallic backplate, giving us a slightly clearer picture of what the finished article may look like. It looks largely similar to the Samsung Galaxy S5, which perhaps isn't too much of a surprise, but without confirmation from Samsung, we can't say whether this is the real deal or not. And finally, it's good news for Nexus 7 owners as Google pushes out the latest KitKat software to its 2013 edition tablets. The biggest fix sorts out a battery drain issue that sometimes happened when an app used the device's camera. There's also a snazzy new dialer app and a few other bug fixes thrown in for good measure. Now it's over to Gareth and John, fresh from WWDC 2014, to talk all things Apple. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of The Phone Show. I'm feeling really strong. John, how about you? Pretty strong. Yes, that's what we <laughs> like to hear. The big topic today is iOS 8. We had WWDC earlier last week. Did you like what Apple put forward with iOS 8? Do you think it was the right thing to do? Well, we knew it was never going to be a big overhaul like iOS 7 was last year. It was going to always be more iterative and that's exactly what it was. But it has brought uh, a load of new functions to Apple users, some which some people have been really calling for and some other ones which are you know a bit more interesting uh, just to make it more, a more rounded experience really and give Apple users a lot more interactivity. And what was your highlight when you saw I mean, you obviously you were there watching the stream and you saw, you saw exactly how it played out on stage I mean what, what was the thing that you thought that that's what we needed that was right? The, the big thing for me personally was the keyboard being able to download third-party keyboards whenever yeah. I go back to an iOS device from an Android device at the moment I use Swiftly on the Android and I go back to an iOS device and bar the screen size which is a feeling a little cramped compared to the flagships that we're used to. It, the keyboard, I just don't like it as much. It doesn't work quite as well. The prediction isn't there. Yeah. When it first arrived, it was great, but keyboards on other platforms have advanced hugely. So being able to download a third party keyboard and have what you want to use on the iPhone is really good. And it shows Apple breaking down that sort of very walled garden approach it has. And it could be a positive thing for the future as well if, or if it's allowed people to do keyboards what else might it break down in the future and let's do yeah and i think when you when you look at it obviously one of the key things they apple talked about was you know the improvement in the notifications area which was really needed and i i'm, I'm still yet to see whether it exactly it will play out because you know we haven't had a chance to actually try it out but the notifications area right now is just it's just pointless you know when, when it first came out you, yeah, everyone's saying it's just copying Android. It's not because it's useless. You know, the way that there's just loads of things stacked up there that you look at once in a while compared to Android where it's, a, it's probably, you know, you, one of the things you go to more than anywhere else on the phone. You're having a constant look to see what's happening. And Apple definitely needs to move towards that. And there's, there's an ideology that you can now, you know, they're interactive. You can message from them and things like that. And if, if it works, I think it'll actually be better than what Android does. I mean, they're interactive now with Android, sure, but you don't have the whole, you still have to jump in and out of, um, yeah, you know, at the apps themselves sometimes. I mean, there are certain things you can do, but it seems that like Apple will take that one step further yeah. and allow you just, you know, just to quickly jump into a whole new interface that's so not the same as the phone. So I think if that works, that'll be really interesting and it will again push the Android message further because Android 5 will then have to be better because, you know, the notifications area has been refined over the years but it hasn't changed ostensibly. So it's I think that's the bit that excites me the most is that there's be this whole new interface area that sits separately to the phone. It will almost be like a separate OS that sits mm 
you know, out of place from the apps, and I think that's quite interesting. Well, exactly. I mean, it allows you to, for example, reply to a text without having to launch the messaging app. You can just do it over the top. I mean, uh, again, that's not new. You can do that on the LG G2. But it's, right it's last just year, the LG, that's the thing. It's, it's it, not universal. Yeah, it was a skin. And also, as you said, Apple, I take it a step further. So it's integrated with the calendar app. You can accept and decline appointments straight from the notification bar and, and other things with other apps as well. So yeah. there is a, another level on top of the sort of skin that LG gave us. Yeah. But, and again, you know, you know, things like apply, you know, replying to calendar apps, you, again, you can do that on Android. But it's, it's on certain devices, and certain ones allow you to do that. And it's that kind of, you know, an Apple is just one, the iPhone is just one device, or the iPad as well. And it's, but it does, say, it does feel more unified by having it all together like that in a kind of very refined way. The, well, the whole announcement at WWDC was about a unified ecosystem across iPhone, iPad, and, and Mac even. Yeah. And it's all about bringing it together and really showing, look, Android, terribly fragmented, which we all know, mm. whereas Apple's providing a far more cohesive experience for everyone whatever you have on one device it will be there on another one it, they'll all work across each other they'll sync you can pick up calls on your mac and your ipad from your phone and everything and it's and, and that's what they're selling and that is what is actually quite interesting you know you can have the three devices and they'll all speak harmoniously together yeah. it's not quite as easy to do that with android especially if you have a slightly older phone running maybe jelly bean you know it's very easy to get caught up though and it's you're right you know, it allows the mac and the iphone and the ipad to sync together better but I'd, I don't know whether it would still attract anyone to the iPhone experience. You know, if you're, if you're an Android user right now and you're thinking of switching, I, I still didn't see much in iOS 8 that made, would make me go, yeah, that's a good idea. And I think that was partly because, and understandably, we didn't see any hardware. And I think HealthBook gave us, or HealthKit, sorry, gave us the biggest indication yet there's an iWatch coming because it says, oh, it can handle all these new bits of hardware, you know, yeah. third party. And, you know, why would Apple not allow, have their own version of that, which yeah. basically says the iWatch is going to, come and it's going to be part of that and it's going to make a big hmm. you know influence on that because not just because apple should have hardware but because it needs to show something more than that i don't know how it exactly will work but i think apple will take that quite quite well forward well coupled the iwatch ios 8 and then a potentially larger iphone 6 hmm. with a screen size which sort of rivals the android rivals and maybe we would see people on android potentially considering exactly. the swap because then that's the complete package ios 8 as you say is itself on a 5s is is still a small size screen and a lot of people on Android now prefer the larger screen yeah. and especially with sort of all the notification interaction if you're replying to a message in your notification bar you, you need a decent amount of space to see what you're doing and on a small four inch screen it's going to get quite cramped yeah. so the sort of a 4.7 inch screen which is sort of being rumoured would make more sense. Yeah and I think nowadays smartphones are good they're just, they're just all quite good yeah. it's, it's not a case of oh you need to go to the iPhone or you need to go to an Android phone because you hate something on the other one it, there's, there's no real reason to switch anymore and you, so you have to be something really exciting and it's I think the iPhone 6 will you know the, the hints we're getting are I mean what there's a couple of quite code based things I mean metal where you know Apple is stripping down the difference between the software and the hardware so that it can actually really create some high quality high graphical games that could be amazing you know it, it, we're talking real high level console quality on a phone or on a tablet and if, if yeah and if the iPhone 6 combines a larger screen with a higher pixel density with that kind of ability, then that is that's a real setting point. You know, the, your gaming can go to the next level with this, and I think that's, Apple's always been very good at making sure its apps and games are, are well integrated and look really good. But you know, it's those kind of underlying things. Same as the Swift code, you know, it's doesn't mean much to a lot of people, yeah. but it basically means apps can be made more easily, more fluid, and look better. And you know, that means more creativity in that space. So one of the bigger talking points around the iOS 8 announcement was something called Health Kit and then the Health App on top of that. Yep. Uh, something we were expecting to be called possibly Health Book, which was rumoured ahead of yeah. time. What are you seeing there? Well, I mean, it, they are both together in, in what they offer, but the health is the really the, the front-facing element of it. That's where everything will get aggregated and, you know, if you've got... You know, it, the reason that it was called Health Book is because it does mimic Passbook in a way that people thought it was going to work. And it's very similar to how people intended it would do because it does... It's not just Apple's health app. It's where it's kind of the landing page for if you've got body scales or your own blood pressure monitor or anything like that. And that's where it will all be together. And it's a really good idea to have everything unified in one place. You don't want separate disparate apps for these, these things. You want to have it all in one place where you can actually monitor your health. It doesn't matter which accessory you've got. You know, health kit is basically the thing that those manufacturers will have to take. It's an API to allow them to use that software effectively. So whatever they create and whatever they use allow, you know, can fit seamlessly into iOS 8 devices. And you know, I'm quite excited about this because 
the whole, you know, we've, the wearables market with, you know, fitness bands, it's starting to wane a little bit. People don't really have the, the same luster for finding out exactly how many steps they've walked because there's no end goal, is there? You don't, you don't know what it could be. And it's, it's, my hope is that there'll be some more aspiration elements to it. So, you know, today you're going to walk this many steps for this reason and, and this is, you know, your blood pressure is going down because of it. And it'd be all sort of, you know, more holistic and that, that's what's going to be really exciting. It's all exciting. more related, isn't it? Really? Yeah, because exactly. And I th someone asked me, that they're talking about this to someone and they're asking what it was going to be. And I was saying, you know, iWatch is going to be like the hero device of that and it's going to allow people to monitor in real time possibly, um, you know, the health things that really matter to them. And even, you know, if doctors want to use this health kit API, they can get real time information every day without having to actually do anything. You just, you know, the phone will send an alert to the doctor and tell you blood pressure and everything. So someone said, well, does that mean, you know, older people will be using the iWatch as a kind of medical device. That doesn't sound very cool. But the benefit of that is that it's not, they won't be using the iWatch. They will use one that costs a tenth of the price yeah. and just is massive and does the right things. But that's what they need. And you know, if, if the health services can afford that, then that's, that's great. And it will all feed in together in a nice unified way. It all sounds nice. And obviously showing with, with the doctors has obvious advantages. But for a lot of people, that's very sensitive information that they yeah. don't want accessible um, you know, we can be relatively sure that Apple's not just going to be like, here's a lot of data which is easily accessible, it's going to be blocked up, but there's still going to be that point of, do people actually want a lot of their health data being recorded and sent to their, their, their doctor on such a regular or easily accessible basis? Well, I don't think it's going to be the thing that you just do as a matter of course. It's for people that have got dedicated conditions. So if you've got heart failure, it will be able to tell you, you know, the heart may perhaps give a a constant reading of heart rhythms throughout the day. You could have, like I said, a dedicated ECG monitor or something that would actually be able to work, you know, if, if, that's, if that's the complaint you've got, then something plugs in, and instead of having to have it on and go back to hospital and get the readings taken off, it's literally connected to your phone and then off it goes. And that's a really easy, seamless way of having all the data. So it's not going to be a case of you have to choose what you want. It's going to be simplifying the situations that already are there where you have to have bulky devices and then have them taken off at the hospital and, and spend time waiting when really, if it's an ongoing concern and you do need constant blood pressure monitoring and th the important thing is like real time reaction so if you know blood pressure does spike over the place and you, you catch it within the day rather than having to wait a week when you actually go back and give the full readings and they say oh it's all gone a bit wrong there so that's i think that's the benefit of it and that's wider than you know we talked about this before it's been wider as a, a benefit of the mobile phone as of the smartphone and i think apple is now just one of the few companies that is saying, look, this is what's going to happen and this is how we're going to do it. And because it's unified and it's one operating system, it can do that. And, you know, we saw on stage at WWDC that medical professionals were saying, we, we're really excited about this. This yeah. can really help us. And anything that makes a health service more efficient is, is a great thing. So we talked about what iOS 8 is going to be. The question is, when are we going to see it? I mean, is it going to be soon or is it going to be later this year or what? Uh, as with any iOS release to date, Apple have said we're going to see the final product in the fall usually September, October, and in the past, it's arrived alongside the announcement of a new iPhone. So we expect the iPhone 6 to arrive and also iOS 8 to be rolled out to other devices, the 5S, the 5, the 4S, etc. Um, so you've got to wait to about then. There is, however, for the first time, an open beta, which you can apply for uh, to get a little bit of a feel for it and provide more feedback from Apple and hopefully make the final release uh, more consistent. Is it, yeah, that, that, that open beta is interesting because one of the things I've noticed before is, you know, even though developers aren't supposed to talk about it, people do give previews of what it's like and how it works. And it, it's interesting to note how bug-filled early versions of iOS 8 are in the, in, the, in the developer stage, because Apple does open it up and then developers find the faults and, and it kind of, it works that way. And it's good because it opens up the, the possibility of finding things that may not thought about. Yeah. And then my worry is that if people start getting their hands on it and thinking, oh, this is rubbish, I don't understand, you know, and it doesn't work or the keyboard makes it crash in certain apps, and it's, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. So that's it for yet another episode of The Phone Show. John, how are you feeling? Really good, really that's, good. That's really nice. It then. is, isn't it? So if you want to find out more, please subscribe to the channel and you can get all the latest phone gossip. John, anything to add? That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. Yeah, you know, it's like a vest. <laughs>